Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. You may have seen my upload about exhibiting with the UK R2-D2 builders at Winchester Science Centre for World Space Weekend, which I put up last week. I'm going to be doing another event with the UK R2-D2 builders, and I'm going to be doing some more 3D printing demos, probably making some more power couplers or some other parts. The event isn't until next month, it's on the 15th and 16th of November, at Collector Mania Milton Keynes. I'll be there for two days, hopefully doing some 3D printing. There's only one slight problem, which is no power. So we have to pay for the table, and power costs £125 plus VAT for the weekend, and VAT is a tax which is 20%, so it's about £150 in money to get one single PowerPoint for two days. So I'm going to find out today if it's possible to run a 3D printer on batteries for two days. And I'm not sure what the answer is yet, we're about to find out. So I own two 3D printers. The one on the left here is the Lulzbot TAS 3, and the one on the right there is the older model Lulzbot, which is the AO101. Uh, both these printers I've used for demos, and I've used them in exhibitions and so on. So they're both quite good printers, but they both, of course, run off outlet power, which is a bit of a problem. So there's one answer, which is to get a big car battery or two and get a mains inverter, and then we can get uh, mains outlet power from a car battery, then we can plug the printers in. But of course, actually, the power supply for these printers is another mains power supply that takes the mains outlet power and turns it back down to a lower voltage. So it's going to be quite a lot of losses transforming up and then back down again. Ideally, we just run the printer straight off the batteries. So the Lulzbot TAS 3 is a 24 volt printer, so 24 volts comes out of its outlet adapter and that power supply is rated at 360 watts. So we could go and get two car batteries and wire them in series, um, that would be rather costly although it would run. Um, the printer on the right, the AO101, is rather smaller and that's actually a 12 volt printer. So I've only got one car battery and I don't really want to have to buy another one, so I'm going to try and make that one run off batteries. Now both of these have got heated beds, so we can print in ABS as well as PLA and other materials, which keeps the plastic nice and warm and stops it warping while it's printing. So um, I think the heated bed is going to be out, so I'm going to print in PLA that doesn't need a heated bed because it shrinks less as it cools. So the plan is to run the smaller printer without its heated bed on, using PLA which is a lower temperature anyway than ABS, so we don't have to heat the nozzle so much, run that straight off 12 volts from a big battery, um, and see how long it lasts. So I've got a collection of items on the table. I've got the power supply for the AO101, which um, is rated at 12 volts and actually 16 amps. But it's only gonna draw 16 amps when all the motors are running and both the nozzle and the bed are heating. So on average, I'm hoping for it to be much less. My car battery is actually a leisure battery from Halfords in the UK, which is one of these ones for powering the fridge in your caravan. This is a 12 volt, 70 amp hour battery. Um, and that roughly means I can draw 7 amps for 10 hours. So I'm hoping to draw less than 7 amps whilst I'm printing without the heated bed on so that I can run this for 10 hours. I've got a battery charger there which is for charging up to 70 amp hour batteries. So basically I can charge this in the hotel I'm staying in overnight hopefully and then run it again all day the next day and we should get 10 hours of printing. But only if on average we're drawing less than 7 amps. And in reality, we probably won't get seven amps for 10 hours right to the end. We'll probably get it for nine hours. But I'm not sure it's gonna draw less than seven amps, so maybe less than that. So uh, the connector on this for the actual printer is one of these four pin power plug DINs. So I've got a couple of those. I bought two in case I break one. Um, and those were from Maplin Electronics in the UK. I've also got some other stuff. So I've got the proper clamps for the battery that goes on just in there, so these things pull off and these things clamp on properly. I've also got some wire to wire it in and I'm hoping this wire is gonna carry five amps and there's four pins in the connector. So uh, basically two are positive and two are negative, so I'll be running two stretches of wire. And I've also very importantly got a fuse. Um, I've got a fuse holder here, it takes blade fuses and a selection of fuses in different ratings, three, five, 10, 15 and 25 amp. I've got a 10 amp installed in there, uh, we'll see if that's sufficient. Um, it's very important we have a fuse because if we accidentally short out the car battery somehow due to dodgy soldering through this wire, um, the wire will melt down and burst into flames because I've seen it happen. Uh, these batteries can source a lot of current 
So um, we need to solder this up and put it all together and basically run the printer and measure the current and from that we can work out how long it's going to last. All right, so having examined the original connector, I don't know if you can see that very easily, let's try and get some focus on that. Uh, there's four pins and yeah, there we go. So uh, basically two of them are spaced slightly further apart and they're also near a notch in the connector. And those two are positive um, and the other two are the negative pins. So um, I have to solder to this tiny connector that's in here, which I've got just in my helping hands. So basically what I'm doing there, you can see I'm actually clamping the pin I'm soldering to rather than the plastic body, which I'll expect to melt. So rather than heating with the soldering iron and applying pressure to it and melting the plastic, I'm going to clamp each individual pin and solder to that pin. So I'm currently clamping the one of the positive pins. Right, so I'm just going to solder one of those wires on. Let's just get some solder in there. Each of these things has got a tiny hole in the end. So we'll just find one of our red wires. And we should be able to solder that in there. So I'm reassembling the connector as per the instructions. There's several multiple pieces that fit together, including a spring. So, so far I've got the metal cover on, the cable clamp and the wires inside. And once I've put this all together, I will be testing for shorts, of course. So um, I put the cable clamp on and then I need to put on, apparently, the spring. There's the next section on, and so there we go, there's my connector all wired. So we're just going to check for shorts, and then we should be able to power things up. So I've set my multimeter to continuity mode, which means if I touch the probes together, or there's a short, I get a beep. So I've got my connector here, and the other end of the wires are here. So I need to check that neither of these are shorted out. So we need to put the uh, meter, of course, between the positive and the negative. And we'll find there's nothing there. And the same on there, and hopefully, no, nothing there. And then we need to check between the two, because they're wired to separate pins. So yeah, nothing there. And nothing there, so that all seems good. So I've wired my negative wire to the negative battery terminal, and the positive wire with the fuse onto the positive terminal. So all that remains is to join my positive wires together. And I'm going to put a bit of sleeving over that, over that so there's no accidents. And this is heat shrink sleeving that comes on a roll. And basically it shrinks when you heat it. So we can slide this up, make the solder joint, slide that back down. Then we can heat it and it will shrink down and make a nice connection. So there's my solder joint. I should point out that's actually the good connection and the heat shrink just insulates it. So we'll just slide this over. And then if we hit it with a flame, we should find it shrinks down quite nicely. And that will keep it nice and insulated. doesn't need much heat, you can rub it with the soldering iron. There we go, and you can see that shrunk down to fit. So I'm all wired in. Um, let's just turn the printer on. Well, it looks pretty good. Obviously I haven't tried heating it up yet. But when I do, I want to measure the current drain. So I've got my roll of PLA ready to go on here. I actually need to take the ABS out that's in the nozzle. Um, I'm also, I've still got the PET bed there. I have got some blue tape, which is um, basically it's blue painter's tape, which is the correct surface for printing PLA. I'm not going to bother with that today. I'm just going to print on the PET that I've got on there just to test it. We only need to run it for a bit to see what sort of average power it draws. So uh, first of all, I need to wire the meter into the battery so that I can sort out working out what the current drain is. So let's have a closer look at that. So in order to measure uh, what current is being drawn, I need to um, put this meter, it's got a special 10 amp range, that's in fact the highest it goes, so I need to move this over from the normal setting for voltage, ohms and milliamps and put it into the 10 amp um, setting there. And then I need to set this to 10 amps and that to DC. And then what we need to do is put the leads for this in line, so I need to break one of these connectors and put the multimeter in the middle. So I'm going to do that, it's a bit of a bodge, but I only need to measure it once, so I'm going to just use these big crocodile clips. So I'm just going to take this connector off here, and we're going to wire the positive lead on there with the crocodile clip, which I'll put on as securely as I can. And then we're going to wire the negative one to the positive here. 
Um, it doesn't actually matter which way around we do it, other than we'll get a negative reading if we do it the wrong way around. So, all right. So now if we turn on the printer, we should get a current reading. Yes, we do. We get 250 milliamps. And that is just to run the electronics, which is an Arduino, so I guess that's about right, and the fan. So let's heat the printer up and see how that goes. I'm just going to go on the control panel, and we're just going to heat up the hot end. Temperature, nozzle, and we're going to heat that up to... I'm going to go for 190 degrees. Alright, so... So we're currently drawing... 2.39 amps so that's just to heat the nozzle so hopefully when the motors are running we can average um, under 7 so we'll let that heat up, put some PLA in and I'll kick off a print okay so it's up to temperature as you can see to hold the temperature there it's only using about uh, somewhere around an amp to one and a half amps and the nozzle is still using PID control so it's not just switching on and off it's basically using PWM to hold the temperature so let's um, Try and print something, and um, what have I got in this SD card? We'll see how we do. So that's moving the motors, or at least two of them. And we're not doing too bad actually, it's hardly drawing any current. So it's just going to print a tube with any luck. Well, it would be, but anyway, it's extruding and putting filament down. We're only doing three amps. Now, my filament's not really sticking to the bed. But nonetheless, it's extruding and, um, and the motors are running. Uh, it's only drawing, oh, what's that, three and a half amps? Three amps. It must be when it goes and heats the nozzle up a little bit. So this is great. So apart from my prints failing drastically, I probably need to put that blue tape down. In fact, some of it is sticking now. There we go. Just about. Well, not really. No, not really. But um, the extruder is running, so we are testing the motors. And we're still only drawing three and a half amps, so that means we can run for nearly 20 hours. So I'm going to kill this print, maybe put some blue tape down and just check that that's the same consistently. Alright, so as you can see my print is now bonding to the blue tape, I'm just printing off, basically it's a tube. Um, and I've wired in another metre here, so the metre on the right hand side is just wired red and black to the positive and negative. So I can monitor the battery voltage. Um, obviously now it's um, almost dead on 12, a bit higher as you'd expect. As the battery goes flat that will go down and I'll need to monitor that on the day. Um, but obviously with the current drain that we've got there, which is I've not seen that meter go over 3.6 amps, uh, we should be good for at least 10 hours and I believe the days are 9 to 6. So obviously there's some time for cooling down, taking the part off, changing filament um, and printing off another part when it's going to draw much less than that. Obviously, as we saw, it only drew um, around two and a half amps whoops, to, uh, to heat up. And when it's just holding the nozzle there, it's around one amp. So we're well less than the seven amp average, uh, which means that we can quite happily print for a day, charge up the battery at night and print the next day from battery power all day. So that's still happily printing away, as you can see. Um, and hopefully you found that super informative. So don't forget to check out the rest of my channel for more projects using 3D printing, including my giant Hulkbuster suit which is made of multiple materials, and some other projects in my channel including my Iron Man suit and my 3D printed alien xenomorph arm.